inside the Flag Empire Library umbrella, uh, a lot of other technologies and projects. And it's all BSD. You want to take it, rip it open, use bits of it, modify bits of it, put it in your hacks, it's fine. Use it however you want. It's all BSD license. We, we like our stuff to get used. And uh, these are the two links that you got to remember if you remember nothing else from the top. Those two links are where you want to go to. And you can uh, check out the API docs. Let's see if I have this working. I do. That's fantastic. So we have a uh, really big scrolling site here. So this is developer.com. This is where you come for the API docs for the various controls in Wayway Library. And uh, yuilibrary.com for the community aspects, the community side of the YUI. This is where you go and talk about, uh, ask questions forums, look at the forums for answers to some of the questions that you have. If you want to uh, come and ask me or other people on the, on the Yahoo uh, team, then you can certainly do that as well. And one piece of that that I'll talk about a little bit later is the gallery. So let's go back. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. 
you're good to go with the value I have. Dom events could be easier. Uh, there's one method for doing the event subscription, whether it's for Dom events or for custom events. It's on. So here you have the, the one method being used again to capture that demo element off the page. So we're using the hash demo to, uh, to capture that by ID. And then just calling the on method, you pass in the name of the event that you want to subscribe to and the callback function that you want to execute when that click happens, right? This happens for, uh, you can use that for mouse events, uh, click events, gesture events, those sorts of things, right? Any DOM event, you can do that. Uh, other objects in the, the YUI API, so if you want to create uh, an instance of widget or something like that, or any other object that you can post to custom events. Custom events are fantastic for, uh, for building applications and uh, just any sort of manage a state or has some sort of communication that goes on as part of that. Custom events are fantastic as a uh, messaging mechanism. They also use on. It looks exactly the same. So just remember on and the name of the event and callback. Really simple API to work with, right? So okay, so now we're, we're pushing stuff out of the HTML. A lot of methods to, to help you do that. Really simple method uh, append, pass an uh, HTML string. This could be any arbitrary HTML string. You put big, long, nested uh, DOM structure. You can put a bunch of P tags, sibling elements, all of that sort of stuff. It'll dump it out there inside of uh, demo. You also have methods like insert or prepend or set content, uh, all sorts of other conveniences for uh, manipulating the, the DOM content. So uh, if you're not familiar with event delegation, come and talk to me later, because I'm not going to go over it now. But rest assured, event delegation is very good stuff. Uh, best practice, we highly encourage you using it whenever possible. It's just a good idea to do from the get-go. And we've baked event delegation into the library. So we have, uh, like we have the line method, we also have the delegate method. And the signature is the same, right? You see that there's a click and there's a callback. But the add-on for the delegate method is this uh, third argument here. At the end, you see the string li. Now that's actually a CSS selector. It can be any CSS selector. Uh, in this case, I chose to do a simple li selector. So anything inside of this uh, demo container that is an li, if you click on anything inside the demo container that that event bubbles up inside inside an li, then it'll fire this call. So any li that gets clicked inside the demo, it fires that call. It's so really handy for doing things if you're uh, modifying the content inside a demo. You don't want to have to worry about event subscriptions again later. Use delegate, really handy, it's the best practice. So let's put some stuff here or there or anywhere. A nice simple method for doing that is uh, set x, y. And you know you want to put something as an x, y coordinates on your page. We can also do uh, more advanced movement of things or changing of things. So we'll use CSS transitions, right? So we have this uh, transition method is an API that lives on the node. And that's going to use an animated style property change over time. So here in this case, we're doing a little bit more complex. We're doing a simple opacity change over time, but we're also specifying we're configuring the duration and also the easing algorithm. This is actually going to use the CSS3 transition spec that exists in some browsers. So we use hardware acceleration if it's there. And it will fall back in other browsers to a simple timing algorithm using set timeout. But the point is that the effect comes with the API, it doesn't matter where you use it. So you can know whatever browser you're in, whether it supports the native behavior or not, you can just use the API and it will have the same visual effect. Um, additionally, here we're, we're adding on a second argument onto the transition, which is a function callback that gets executed after the transition finishes. So in either case, we you fade something out and then remove it from the DOM, right? Pretty straightforward to stop. Uh, let's talk about Ajax. So you're talking to your server, you have uh, this service, that server. So uh, here, um, the, uh, the API is uh, pretty straightforward. The first parameter is what you want to talk to. The second parameter is how you want to talk to. So here's my URL. The configuration object that goes in as the second argument. 
um, does the configuration for the, the transaction. So here, what we care about is very simple. I get a response back from the server. On the completion of that response, I'm going to process it. Here, I'm parsing out the JSON from the response text in that XHR. So if you have any questions about uh, doing any configuration on an I.O. request or using the I.O. APIs, you, know, you can check out the API docs, of course, but I'm also there if you want to ask any questions about that. There's a lot more that I.O. does. It can do cross-domain requests. It does form serialization. It does um, what transaction viewing, a variety of other things. There's a lot of stuff that, a lot of magic that happens here that you get for free. Uh, and that's sort of the, the basic stuff, some of the basic things that you get out of the box with the simple YUI package, right? So the, the simple YUI.js, and that gives you the DOM events, event delegation, uh, AJAX, transitions, those sorts of things. If you want to extend the API, add on more functionality, uh, more, uh, more functionality onto that Y, then traditionally in other libraries what you would do is you would add additional script tags to the page. In YUI 3, we do that in a little different way. What we do is we put that behind a use method, right? So the use method is incredibly powerful. What it does is it takes uh, any number of names of modules, and these modules then correspond to a script tag that contain some API data, but we're not going to stop with just saying, okay, this name means go and fetch the script tag. We have a little bit more information about this module, uh, such as its dependencies, where it's hosted, things like that. And if you request a bunch of modules, for example, in your newsline, then we will take all of those modules, we will do the dependency calculation on them, make sure that when we request them, we're requesting those modules and their dependencies at the same time, asynchronously against our combo loader on the CDN. So you end up with one HTTP request going out, hitting the CDN, and getting everything and its dependencies, and then the last argument you use is this point for I've received my APIs, I've received my modules, they're now loaded onto my Y, and I'm good to go. So if you want to take the simple Y and Y, just get started, start doing your DOM manipulation, event manipulation, uh, AJAX and stuff, then you want to add on additional functionalities, use is where you do it. So you say, use you can plug in here, okay, so I'm going to add some drag and drop functionality to my page, and now I'm going to capture another and I'm going to plug in this drag node, and boom, that node you can drag around anywhere on the page, just like that. And all of the dependencies again for the easy plugin result. So now, uh, Jonathan just spent some great time talking about Light as well. It was nice enough to say that we uh, we love Light as well, which is very true. We love Light as We have a module, the Light as module, which adds this uh, Light as well method here, and it makes interacting with Light as well that simple. This is a functioning program, and I would like to actually show you that functioning program because it takes only a second. There it is. So this, look at that. So there we are, simple AI. I'm actually specifying zip, uh, defining the render function, white and white well. And that is what you just, let's go back. So then, that's all you need to do to interact with LightUL from JavaScript if you want to do it that way. Um, so again, use is uh, ready to do that. And if you're talking about extending the API, extending the, the YUI API, where you get uh, a tremendous benefit beyond just the components that you built on the YUI team, is in the YUI gallery. I mentioned that at the very beginning, on yuilibrary.com, there's a gallery pattern. What the gallery is, is a collection of YUI modules that everybody else has written, the community has written. And what we do is we, if, uh, if you submit those gallery modules to us, we will be happy to host them up on our CDN. And we'll also get information about those modules so that when you put something on our uh, in the gallery, that means that anybody else in the world can then put your module name in their user line and get to use your code. And that all gets 
benefits of the asynchronous loading from the YUI modules, gallery modules too. So right now, you know, we have something like 300 gallery modules right now, uh, ranging between uh, ranging between low level stuff and high level widgets, and, uh, so pretty pretty basic, pretty good things like that. Uh, so you can check that out on YUI right now. If you're coming from YUI2, if you're familiar with the YUI2 APIs, that's also supported inside of YUI3. You can put that in your use line, YUI2, dash YUI2, dash whatever else, right? Loads in those APIs and puts it instead of on the global Yahoo of YUI2, it'll put it on the uh, YUI2 interface on that block. And then, you know, you can use an alias like this if you just wanted to use the other API, right? But, so you get all the benefits of the YUI2 widgets all the way around to do this and fill these and things. If you're familiar with using those APIs, you can use them inside of the three clients. If you're familiar with jQuery, uh, then there's also a, a, a resource called uh, JS Rosetta Stone that does a uh, one to one mapping of the uh, jQuery API functionality to what it would be in uh, YO3. And this is really a, very much a subset of what YO3 is the simple YUI takes care of most of the, the simple stuff that uh, they often kind of get rid of And then all of the rest of the stuff comes in with the additional modules and things. And this is maintained, this uh, site is maintained by paper folks and by the YUI team as well. So uh, we keep that pretty well up to date. So now let's talk about some other environments you can use YUI on. Ruth is actually going to talk about this after me uh, a little bit. And that's YUI on server. So JavaScript on the server, fantastic. Uh, very exciting about, the, uh, about using JavaScript on the server. Um, and Dave Glass has done some, uh, some great work uh, making YUI 3 work on the server, which was surprisingly easy, actually. Uh, because of the module system that we use and because of the way that we write the code, uh, for the most part, it just worked on its own. We plugged it into the server, and it just worked. Now we have things like JS DOM, which give you a virtual DOM on the server that we can take our widgets and we'll render them on the server and then output that HTML down to the page so you can, uh, in an environment where a uh, client doesn't have JavaScript turned on, for whatever reason, they don't have JavaScript turned on, you can actually send down the rendered widgets as HTML instead of relying on clients like JavaScript to make your page look like JavaScript. But anyway, I'll let me do uh, more of a settle on what's going on on the server side there. But some really great stuff going on with uh, with quite what I know. So now the last thing I want to cover before I'm out of time is the CSS portions. Uh, just a couple of the CSS style sheets in quite why three would be specifics: the reset, the fonts, and the grids. The last of those is more exciting. So <clears throat> you want to use these. These are really really easy to just drop on your page and they take care of the problems for you. So CSS reset, if you're not familiar with CSS resets, then I know the design is here and there is CSS resets. Um, but uh, things like heading one, heading two, H H2, uh, lists, cross browser, they you know they might style this differently. The browsers might uh, have different rendering of those. So the reset just wipes it all out. You probably don't want to use the default anyway. You want to make it look good. Uh, so you can just add on the CSS reset onto your page and then provide more CSS on top of that and it will look the same across browsers. Now the similar thing with the fonts is that the different browsers they render font sizes differently. So if you want to do like an end-based design or you want to make sure that your fonts have nice typography and everything's uh, uh, ratio the same between uh, between browsers and fonts is good for that. So you can scale your font sizes and it's all going to be pixel perfect. So let's talk about the exciting grids. In YUI 2, we had a, uh, a grids package that was pretty good. It was really, it was solid, and it was dependable, but it was verbose. So in YUI 3, we trimmed this down a lot. We we're using a new technique for doing grid-based design in YUI 3. Really, really easy. It is, there, you, what you need to know are two class types. YUI 3-G and YUI 3-U. And the G is the grid container, and 
then the U is the unit. We have a bunch of additional uh, classes just for conveniences. But what it does is it says uh, G is where all of your three units are going to go. And you specify the, uh, any number of units that you want inside of that. And it will just line them up. So here the, the convenience class that we have for this unit is 1-3. That's one third. So I want to set three units that are evenly divided uh, inside of that grid container, one dash uh, we, we can talk more about those later. That's all I have time for. Uh, again, come and ask questions. Remember, that's uh, one of the links that I showed earlier, but we have uh, the other one's yuylibrary.com. And I think now I'm going to hand it over to Reed to take this to the server, which would be pretty awesome. I know you're going to talk just a sec. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Lude. Uh, we have a uh, read here to talk about Node.js. Uh, in the other track, track two, we have Raoul going to talk about the Boss API. Yeah. So we'll give you a couple of minutes if you are going to go to the other room uh, before uh, we start. Thanks.